Agala. Yeah, yeah, what up? Peace, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, G. I'm good, maintaining, you know what I mean? Different day, same shit. What you doing these days, man? I see you still making beats and shit. What you up to? I'm working on, you know, a lot of projects, you know what I'm saying? Like movie shit, um, different projects and, um, you know, commercials and, like, you know, placements and shit like that for, like, film and all that and scores and all that. Shout out to my boy DJ Scribble. Me and him been doing a lot of work lately. So, you know, just getting with, you know, dope producers that I know over the years and um, big connecting dots and shit like that, you know what I mean? Right. You still rap? No doubt, no doubt. Um, if you tuned in to me, you listening to Gully TV. This is the Dribble Podcast, and I welcome to my platform a great, great uh, influence on the East Coast sound, namely in Harlem um, and, and and other parts of, the, of, of Brooklyn. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, G. Yeah, Agalon Don Bishop Propane Campaign. You already know what it is. The last line of defense, baby. Was good. Hey, Ag, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Didn't you appear in um the Source Unsigned Hype a long time ago? Yes, yeah, yeah, about um, 1992. 90, I believe. 90, November. damn, 92. And you was Adolf the Assassin? At the time, right. No doubt. I knew I seen you in the Source, man. Tell me what exactly you put together and what, it, what exactly was it that you sent to Source Magazine to appear in the Unsigned Hype? YZ was your your manager. You talking about YZ the MC? Yes, sir. The Holy One. Yep, Return of the Holy One. That's correct. He oh. was my manager at one point. Seven twenty management. How did you meet so, YZ? And was he was was he an MC when you met him? Some stuff 
and he was like, yo, we can, you know, you, you should um, come back, you know, and I came back. He had a contract for me, and you, you wound up doing a management contract, and that wound up leading me to, you know, have representation so I can get signed, because the labels didn't want to sign you if you didn't have a management. Okay. So, you know, I was young, you know, mind you, I was um, 18 and a half, going on 19. So, you know, at that young age, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, the labels, you know, big corporations wanted you to have management, and I, 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 I wouldn't be able to sign them contracts with Sylvia Rome without uh, management. No doubt. Damn. When you so um I take it early on you put more emphasis on being an MC. Yeah, most of most, it was it was it was both. And I gave both the um energy. It was a give and take. From either I had both because, you know, I was a DJ at first. That's where I started at DJ. Okay. And then um, you know, from there it wound up getting me to become a producer because I wanted to MC. So I knew how to DJ already. So that DJ and I applied to my production, you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, you know, that, that, that's where the core, my core uh, talent is, is in DJing. But it wound up transferring me to be a producer. And I was like, nobody wanted to produce me. So I was like, why, why don't I just produce myself? Right. See, I, see, I had work out. And, you know, I, you know, first tries ain't hold the way you want it to be, but then, you know what I mean, you keep staying in the gym, you're going to get eventually better at what you do. So, yeah. Okay. Um, before we go on, um, when you when you encounter Most Def and, and Talib, that was their name? Yeah, um, at the time, Most was Most. Talib was Talib, you know what I mean? Kali, you know, you, that's his real name. So, you know. I knew them as that, you know what I'm saying? Like, we were we were in the park together, and we would just be chilling and rhyming and ciphering. Right, uh, right. With other MCs from all over. Right. Like, from Jersey, Brooklyn, Bronx. You know, we would be ciphering, and then wound up going to Lawrence and Flounce when it was a small apartment uh -huh. on, on uh, Lower East Side. It was a small apartment on Orchard Street that, um, that uh, Danny and Anthony, the owners of Lurch's Lounge, they had a small apartment with invite them seats over, and we would all be cycling. And um, there was a spot we can get creative, you know, bring a beat machine, you know, play beats, let, you know, MCs rhyme. It was that type of order in the early days of Lurch's Lounge, the very beginning. Did you, um, when they came out as Black Star, was you like, wow, they made it? Yeah, I've been new. We was all, we was all, we was all in a workshop level of going to make it with each other. We already knew what most was doing because most was an actor doing commotion, commercials, and me and most was friends. So he would invite me over to his crib, and I, I would be chilling with most. Me and most was, you know, really, really tight at the time. Before, you know, I would say the Black Star success. But I already knew most was going to be successful the way he carried himself and the way he dealt with the way he dealt with um, reality. He just you know handled business. Mm, no doubt. So what was the um when you when you basically said you was kind of like forced into producing for yourself? What was the first record that you did that you was like this joint bump right here? I could do something with this. Um, the records that got me uh, signed, there was a record that I had called um, I'm a Blow Up the Earth. And there was another one called Somebody's Faking Moves. Okay. And um, Somebody's Faking Moves is the one that Run from Run DMC walked in in the studio and said, What the fuck is that? He had told Onyx, I need to put this nigga out now. And they didn't know what to do with me, so I went and took the demo to East West. And um, Sylvia Rome, she wound up signing me right on the spot. Okay. You know so I mean? How did you end, in, end up in the same room as Onyx? Well, friend, we had a mutual friend of ours named uh, DJ Greg that worked at New Tribe where they cut hair in Queens. So 
I was making my way in the game, and they was already signing JMJ, and Craig said, yo, um, yo, your sound sound like they need, you need to be with Onyx right now. And I was like, How? I don't ever know. I don't know these dudes. But the introduction was through Greg. He wound up introducing me to Fred on a stick, and we hit it off. And, um, you know, they took me on the road and um, wound up, you know, learning learning the road from being with Onyx and went around the world with them and run DMC. Right. So it basically sounded like you had a whole life, career, and resume before you even made it to the to the Harlem chapter of your career. You've been getting down. Basically, yeah, in a nutshell, I've been, you know, I've been blessed to have uh, greats, you know, recognize my talent, understand the role I play, and um, the many hats that I wear in this industry and, you know, what I'm capable of doing and what I've done for a lot of these acts over the years. And um, with that came a lot of respect, learning, um, being patient, um, just understanding, you know, the, the relationship, um, which is very key in this business, you know, and, and understanding having, you know, to uh, know what your your um your your position and know how to play. It. You know, and I I, I I study well under a lot of greats. You know, too many to name. You know, and you know, Run is one of them though. You know, um, Jam Master J, another one. I've been blessed to be around these people. I mean, when you're around Run DMC, I mean, those three individuals, you're going, I'm, all, I'm going around the world with them. I'm not talking about come out with a show. I'm talking about, like, Run asked me to introduce him in Germany. He picked me to introduce him on stage in Germany. Introduce Run DMC, basically, not just him. Damn. But when you get that, when you get that, I mean, and nobody knows who I am, but him believing in me, you know, um, I carried with me forever, you know, and um, I never broke that relationship with Run or, you know, Jay or, 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 or DMC. We, you know, those guys are, are, are my heroes. I grew up watching them. It's, it's surreal how I grew up watching these are my black heroes and I wound up being with them in real life. Yeah, but that's... I, that's... I don't know how to explain that. That's got to be crazy. That's got to be yeah, crazy. I, I still think about it to this day. You know, it saves me from going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> See, sometimes, um, sometimes time can, like, I don't want to say fade memory and things like that, but sometimes we get away from how big Run DMC was, man. Them niggas was bigger than life. Like, um, very few rap acts experienced that level of popularity um pop popularity too like the whole galaxy knowing about them and touring everywhere they did, they did for back what Michael Jordan did for basketball I'm gonna just say that yeah what DMC did for rap what Michael Jordan did for basketball with the endorsements yeah yeah Yo. nobody had endorsements like when DMC and Adidas come on son so when did you um when did you make the progression from Adolf the Assassin to Aguilar to Don Bishop? Well, you know, or, or do you still or do you, do you still everybody use both? Call me Aguilar from top. I just didn't add it on. I got many names. I go by a lot of names like Brad Piff, like Eddie Propane, Ag Al Goo, Abdul Swagalaw. You know, I was coming with all kinds of names. You know what I mean? And um. You know, I was just running with that wave, or you know what I mean, being able to change it up. You know what I mean, still be you know yourself, but you know, I, I'm a, I'm such a creative person, so I gotta go into different modes when I create, depending on how I feel at the time or where I'm at in my life. Right. And you know, that's where I come out with all of these different names. Come out, you know, Adolf. You know, that's really you know like a name where I was, you know, just a. Uh, Coming into being young and, and finding myself at a beginning stage where I knew I had growth in me, knew I needed to grow. And I, I wasn't satisfied with that name, but it looked cool. And I was like, well, you know, and it felt cool. I was like, all right, I'm going to use it. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't given to me. It was more or less, you know what 
mean, something that I knew I, I, I was born on May 8th. So I ran with that, you know what I mean? The number eight, you turn it sideways, it's infinite. So I felt that my, my flow was infinite at the time because I, I used to rhyme different from a lot of MCs, you know what I mean? And I would, you know, see Buster Rhymes and, 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 and the whole leaders and go up in the air cyphers and rhyme with them and then bug them out and they would be like, who the fuck is this kid? Right. You know what I mean? Buster would, you know, we, we, a lot of this shit, you know, I did... Because I, 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 I battled a lot of niggas and I wound up, you know what I mean, coming into a lot of, you know, opportunity because of it. And they thought I was cool because they wouldn't expect it coming from, you know, a guy out of my frame or, you know, where I, where I was at at the time. Right. So. Does it... Um... I'm familiar with your story. I done seen you going back and forth with, you know, with on and stuff like that. Does, does it bother you that it seems like you're more so known for the diplomat Purple City portion of your career as opposed to being recognized for all of that. Other, you just named some shit that's way bigger than Purple City. You fuck with Run DMC. Does that bother you that that's what you're known for? No, no, no. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, put my, put my um feelings on what I'm known for rather than, you know, what I've known I've done, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, you look at my resume, it will, it will really shock the fuck out of a lot of producers, you know, and, um, you know, not only, um, Run DMC or Onyx, but I, I dealt with EPMD as well, you know, people don't understand that I do have a history with EPMD. I actually doing an NFT drop soon to me and Paris Smith, we got records that, you know, we, we've done that haven't been released, unreleased for NFT release soon. So it's something I, 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 you know, that's part of my story, whether it's more recognized than others, but it's still a story. And, you know, I'm still here very instrumental with a lot of these artists' careers. Right. You know, not only mine, not only uh, Diplomats, not only Purple City, but many others. Okay. How did you meet Shy's Bub from Purple City? first project or piece of music that you put out with uh with, with with purple city or the guys from 45th and broadway well um i did um you know i produced some records with sites uh, you know at first there was a lot of records that i was bringing through that i already had of my own and um other people had records of their own and he would put the records on a mixtape i would have my own records already you know, certain records that he liked that I would play for him. And then he was like, y'all want to use that? Like, for instance, there was this record called Gangster. And um, it wound up on Diplomat Volume 4. But, you know, it's my record. So the only way he could get it on there was like, yo, let me get it, let me pass it to them, you know what I mean? Because they don't know you like that, but they know me. I can get it on the tape. I was like, I ain't met it. Yeah. So when it got on the tape, Everybody started hitting me like, yo, that's your shit. They're like, yeah, you know, woo, woo, you know. And my name started going up because I was on a diplomat volume four. Right. I'm not a diplomat. I was assigned to them. They ain't offered me a contract or nothing like that. It was just an opportunity to get on a tape. You know what I mean? And, I, I, you know, at the time, you know, it was a big deal because they had a name. And um, they were, you know, showing love and giving a spot to the other artists that wasn't signed. Right. And, um. You know, I, I got a slot, you know what I mean? And you know what I mean? How it happened, Shice, you know, shook some hands and made the slot happen for me. Okay. Tell me about the um the making of let letting the guns go. That's one of my favorite joints that you was on that y'all did together. And that's my that's a classic mixtape song and shit. Well, that's my record. 
originally, uh, I knew know, I knew you was gonna say that because you sounded really, really natural on that joint. <laughs> That was your hook? That was your hook? Um, listen closely, your attention's on the body. Many in the past and tried to do what I did. Just the way I came off then and I'ma come off. But this time we letting the guns off. Letting the guns go. And I took that piece from Master Ace. Master Ace say that, you know what I mean? I, I, you know, shout to Master Ace, that's my homie. But I re what he said. You know what I mean? In the gangster way. You know what I mean? There's right. a lot of shit going down at the time, at that time. So I had to go, you know what I mean? I had to go on that level because, you know, my rappers were talking crazy. You know, you know, and a lot of shit was happening in the streets. And you had to, you know, man up. So, and, you know, especially with Dipset, you know what I mean? And I'm from Brooklyn. So, I, I, I you know, in Brooklyn, we, we, we know for that wild shit out here. You know what I mean? Like, but at the end of the day, they wanted... I felt like I bought that to Dipset. I bought that street vibe that they needed outside of Harlem, outside of what they had going on with Jim as well. You know what I mean? But I bought another level, you know what I'm saying, to it. You know what I mean? So, like I said, you know what I mean? Like, I bought that record. I, I did it by myself. And the next thing you know, Jim heard it. Jewel heard it. They jumped on a remix. And then the rest is history. Okay. That joint fire. I think that that was the first song that I heard that I felt Jim Jones got off on. After that song, his talent, his rap, his music, it kind of like started to get better. From that point on, I think that was the first joint that I was like, damn, that shit hard as fuck. Did you record the vocals for that? Like y'all was in the lab together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That those types of records, there's um, was 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 records like that a record that couldn't get put out beyond mixtapes and shit like that. Like, was there restraints on that joint? No, no, no. That record, that record, did make 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 light of day with the Koch record. Did it? So we, signed, we, we, we all signed to Koch, but different deals. I signed to Baby Grand with Purple City, but I saw my own deal. That record winds up being on our album. On a Purple City album, but that was my record. Like I said, Purple City was more of not a group thing, but it was more of a couple of artists that we were all, we were all we'd be put together by Shice handpicking us. And that's when Smoke Desert also came out as well. You know, first time I heard Smoke Desert was on a Purple City show. It was. So, that's, yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, he's own, uh, he was his own artist back then when he had Smoke and Mirrors. That's, that's his original group. It was Smoke and Mirrors. So, if you ever heard that shit, you know, you, you know, if you know about Smoke Business, you go back to Smoke and Mirrors and you see he was rocking with Purple City at the time. And a lot of people use Purple City as a, as a platform. You know what I mean? A, a, you know, a lifestyle platform for hip hoppers that was on that piff or, you know, not wanna related music that people like. And right. that's what you know we, we, we were branding ourselves as. Would you credit Purple City as introducing the term Piff? Uh, to, to to the general public. I mean outside of Harlem and shit like that. Of course. Get the credit because he he the one that set it off. 
But we platformed it because he was he part of us too. He part of the movement too. Right. So you know, at the end of the day, like it was, you know, he was there when we we was all doing it. But the time came from Jitterbug, but we pushed the time because we already. We 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 the ones that you know what I mean were you know facilitating the vibe. You feel me? Right. So it was hand in hand, like you know what I'm saying. So like it went hand in hand. You know what I mean? And and it became big because we all knew it was a big thing, and it wound up having a life of its own, just like the wave, like with Max. Right. Like when he started wave, that wound up having a wave of his own. Okay. You know what I mean? So um, Piff was Sour Diesel, right? No, it wasn't. Nah, it, it wasn't? It was, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, a, a strain of purple haze. Oh, it was a haze. Okay. Yes. Is that strain gone? Is it still around no, today? It's still out there. If you can find it, it's hard to find, you know? But, I mean, if you can find it, yeah, it's still out there somewhere. You know what I mean? You might, go, you might have to go, you know what I mean? You might have to, you know, go searching, but yeah, it's out there. Okay. I um wanted to ask you about this. What, what was your thing with Sean Price? Did you and Sean Price was there some discrepancy with you and Sean Price? I want you to clear that up for me. What was what was? There's never, there's never no discrepancy with me, and there never was. I, I, never, never, never been no discrepancy with me and Sean Price. Never, so what was it? Yeah, yeah, misunderstanding. I, I want you to clarify. Right. But the situation has something to do with uh, the Griselda boys disrespecting me, trying to. And this is when I had to retaliate. Whoever was playing sides of the fence. And obviously, you know, on top of that, you know what I mean? It was, you know, there was a lot of, lot of, lot of talk, you know, whatever the case may be, about, um, you know, what I, you know, what I haven't done. Because I produced Sean Price. You know okay. what I mean? Like, like, you know, and I'm, I'm his producer. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I, I'm the one that put him on Grand Theft Auto 3. You know what I'm saying? I'm the one that got him to get on that beat. It's, it's my song featuring him. You know what I mean? We sold 17 million. Right. You know what I mean? And then I wanted to let him use a song for his album. You know what I'm saying? Because that was my man. Because we grew up together. So I never, I never had no discrepancy with him. The misunderstanding is... People try to disrespect the work I've done with him because, you know what, at the end of the day, either they jealous or they know I pull a card. See, a lot of people in this game play frauds, and I, I'm not the type to play stupid, you know, it's just a music business at the end of the day. Okay. And I, I know what I've done for a lot of artists, and, you know, you can't pull wool over my head, you know, because you, you hot right now. And you think you, you, you can talk and shit at me and, and say something. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, Ag. So that, that's what you felt was going on from Griselda? You felt you got disrespected? Yeah, yeah, sure did. Can you explain yeah, to me? Can you, you explain know, to me? I'm a grown man. You ain't going, you're not going, you're not going to take it to that level. Like I said, we, we nipped it in the bud when we first got together. And then you know what I'm saying? It's, it's no longer existing. You know what I mean? I moved past it. I've been dealing with it for the last two years. Another individual that don't want to mind their business try to hop in. You know how that go. And you know what I mean? Like, you know, we, we, we you know what I mean? We, we here for the bullshit. I mean, just put that out there. I am here for the bullshit too. You know what I'm saying? Niggas know what it is. I, I don't hide. I don't hide my tongue for nobody. People know where I'm at. You know, if they want, you know, I, I, I've dealt with this situation long enough. And, um, you know, ain't nothing sweet over here. You okay. know what I mean? They can, you know, they can play all the games they want. But, like I said, you know what I mean? Like my man told me, we the last line of defense. Remember that. Like I said it, the last line of defense. That's all I'm going to tell you. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And we, you know, we, we, we dealt with it, and that's it. Move on. When I asked you about the Purple City situation, you, you said that basically wasn't really a group. Y'all just kind of like put some records together? No, nah, we was never a group. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't come up with them from the sandbox. I'm a solo artist. Like, they didn't, they didn't sign with me when I signed the two deals with, you know, the major deals and none of that. 
you know, and this deal I did with them was an independent deal with cops. So I had to downgrade to go fuck with niggas. That's how I felt at the time because I was already a major artist. And I didn't need to ride no way because I had my own. Okay. Okay. So, you know, that that, that goes without being said. You know what I mean? Like, you, you look at the budgets that, that the majors gave me compared to how niggas was treating me over there, how to slap a nigga. You know what I mean? That's the type of shit that I, I, had, to, I had to get away from, like, real ignorant vibes that wasn't allowing me to grow, and that's what I felt. You know what I mean? Like, all that shit just wasn't fitting right. So I, so I just did a, a 180 on that whole situation. And once I seen, once I seen um, the whole switch up from the first album to the second album, I wasn't that involved. I, I had a few joints on the second album, but I wasn't really, my heart wasn't in it. And, you know, that because, you know, you know, there, there some business situations that was going left. And um, I just didn't, I just didn't like the way things were happening. And I just, you know, left the situation alone. I was like, yo, bro, go ahead. You, can, you know, you got that shit. I don't even want to deal with it no more. Right. You know what I mean? You still... I don't even want to deal with it because, you know what? Like, you're not going to last in this business. You're not really a musician anyway. So, you know, good luck to you. I... My mama just going through my thing. I'm already, I'm already, I'm already set, man, for life. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, my history is, like, everything that I'm doing. I'm in a $500,000 penthouse right now, chilling. So I, you know what I mean? Like. No doubt. I'm just, like, really good living life. One of the last times we spoke probably was, like, maybe, like, six to nine months ago. You was explaining something you had going on with Wu-Tang, maybe Ghostface. I said I spoke to you uh, probably like last year, sometime like that, and we spoke briefly. And you was telling me that you had some shit going on. I think with one of the Wu Tang guys was it Ghostface? Yeah, yeah, I did a, a remix album called The Ghost Files. I produced it. It's a uh, remix album with me and Bronze Nazareth. Yeah, it's a remix album. It's out on uh, Bronze Nazareth Records. Yeah, it's a remix album. Yeah, it's a remix album. Yeah, it's a remix album. And uh, it's up there, it's called Ghost Files, the propane tape. And, um, you know, you know how, you know, we, we, we know for making that, that great music, man. And, and working with Ghosts was a, was beautiful. Like, you know, they, they, they contacted me and let me get the files for all his vocals. And I wound up doing it in two weeks. And when I handed it in, they couldn't believe when I handed them, he was like, yo, this shit's incredible. And, um, yeah, well, you know, so, you know, I'm just glad to be a part of that as well, because I got a relationship with the Wu, with the Wu. Yeah. And, um, you know, I know Inspector Deck, me and Ray Korn go back. You know, this is not rap, you know what I mean? This is like family, you know what I'm saying? Like, Lounge and Low, a lot of people from Park Hill, I fuck with it. I used to live on Staten Island. And, um, my brother, my brother that, um, that I'm producing right now, I'm producing right now. His name is Jackpot. He the one that, aka Scotty Waddy. You know, um, when Ghostface, I don't know, he on um on one of his albums, he say Scotty Waddy competent me. Scotty Waddy the OG who who like that's you know, on who, um that's on Bullet. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's on. You know, which, joint is, which joint is that? That's on that that that's on the same. CD that Malcolm is on, and the song Malcolm is on that same CD. That song that you talking about, I think that's number one actually, and shit. Yeah, that's the first choice. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember I, the name no, of it, but I'm that's my shit. Him right now. I'm producing him right now. You heard? Yeah. I got a joint with him on my album right now. Scotty Waddy's one of the illest devils, and I ain't you know I ain't with Golden Ever. Nigga, I ain't niggas like like him because he like you know he he. Been rocking with the Wu for many, many years, you know, since they were beginning their whole, you know, movement. So it's an honor to have him in my corner. Right. I seen you um during our, during the course of our conversation this, this afternoon. I see you mentioned that you um you 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 fuck with like doing scores for films and shit, and you do uh soundtracks for like video games and shit like that. How did you find those relationships? 
working with greats, you know, my name got around and, um, you know, people from, you know, video game companies contacted me and, you know, wanted me, you know, to work on stuff. And then I wound up meeting a guy named Antoine Peltier from, he's like from France. And, um, you know, we wound up like, we wound up connecting, you know what I'm saying? Cause he's a hip hop head, a white dude. You yeah. Know the gully? yeah. It's like a white dude. This dude got all my music. He a fan of me. Hmm. Like, like if I put him on the phone with you right now, he be like, he'll, he'll tell you how much music he got in mind, bro. Like, like he's he's like that, like one of them types. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um, you know, he, he flew to New York, met with me in the studio, winds up saying like, yo, I got like this budget. Trust me, this budget was no joke. It was beautiful. It was like, thank you a lot. Right. <laughs> and I wound up, you know, understanding how to score. And, you know, working with other engineers. Like, I scored the NBA Live 08. You know what I mean? And I also scored Undisputed, uh, the MMA game, uh, THC Undisputed. Oh, yeah. Also, Grand Theft Auto and another game called Midnight Club Run. So, yeah, it, it, you know, things just domino effect. And I didn't expect to do this work. It just came in my lap. You feel me? That's dope. Um, I have to go check out that NBA Live joint, man. So what you yeah, just... I, I did all the beats on the NBA Live all week. You know what I mean? That's when Is it, this some funky it, shit? Can, can, a, can a nigga rap on the beats that you gave NBA Live? I mean, at the end of the day, they own it. You know what I mean? They own everything at the end of the day. But, I mean, I'm sure, you know, if you find a beat on there, you know what I mean? And, you know, you, you, you could sample it. Yeah. I'm sure people could do whatever they want these days. Right. Let me ask but, yeah, you something. You know, if you go, if you go play NBA Live 08, all that sound bad, any instrumental on that game, I did it. Okay. No doubt. Did, um... Right now, 2022, well, the last three years, hip-hop in the Northeast region has made made a resurgence from the underground. Um, you got these, all these hot MCs. You got Ito. A lot, of, a lot of guys from upstate New York and shit like that. But not only that, you got Rock Marcy. You got Rome Streets from Brooklyn. There's a new energy in hip-hop um, just basically carrying the East Coast. Because we... Even though drill music is in New York City and the Bronx and Brooklyn, people don't really, that's it, it's deaf music. So it don't really count to us and shit. But you got this new body of MCs and energy that was injected into hip hop. How did it affect you? Well, um, you know, um, I'm cool with Ito and I'm cool with Rome. Those guys, I, I've known them for a minute. They've been, you know, they actually not new. They actually been doing it for a minute. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, uh, you know, good question. You know, a lot of these cats, there's a new generation of new voices that are coming up, and they want to be heard, and you know, it, 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 it's branching out right now for the cultures, and it's beautiful. You know, like, uh, Rome situation. I know Rome before he got with his elder. Me and Rome still cool to this day. You call us him and his elder relationship. Me and him got a few records. He's on a couple of my albums, actually. If, you know, if you, you never heard the joints of me and um, Rome Streets of me and Ito, I suggest you check them. Yeah, I want to hear them joints. I'm fans of both of them guys, man. They they they, they never disappoint me. Those two specifically. Yeah, 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 they always on deck. And um, I got joints with them as well. And, um, you know, we've been doing records for a while, you know, and, and me, and, me and Rome get ready to do something soon. And my boy just hit me, said he want, he's looking for me, Rome looking for me to do some shit for him. So that's going to be dope, me and Rome getting together. And, um, I, I love it, man. I just love, I just love, I just love what's going on. You know what I mean? It's keeping hip hop alive. They keeping you know this mean? shit alive, man. <laughs> they keeping it alive, for real. And I'd be excited. I'd be excited hearing it, hearing what they be putting out. Um, what do you think about the accelerated rate that um, artists are dropping music now? Well, it's good, but then again, you know what I mean. You're not letting, you're not letting um, people got a fiend to make music because they're in front of their computer, and they, you know, they, they, they feel like 
They can make a thousand joints. They can put a mold out the late day. You know what I mean? Right. But, um, you know, the game in the world don't work like that. You know what I mean? You know, unfortunately, a lot of these albums don't don't hit the radar because they don't have enough marketing and promotion on the albums. And that's, just, you know, that's just the truth. Because, you know, if you don't got enough promotion and marketing, how are you going to expect that album to have life? And he putting out another album on top of this album when that album ain't even get the full, you know what I mean? Right. You don't think it's working? No, it is working, but at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, you know, to have the marketing and promotion for each album, having the right videos, you know, none of these, those situations don't always appear, you know what I mean? Okay. You know, and it, and it, and it, and it, you know, for some artists, it's working for some. The music is there, don't get me wrong. It's just that, you know, when, when you, you look at your views or, you know, you, you, you expect to hear your stuff on mix shows or you expect to hear your stuff on certain areas, you just need to market and to promote it more, and that's just what it is. Right. You know, there's a lot of dope stuff that I like, but a lot of people don't know about it because it ain't marketed and it ain't promoted right. Right. What do you think about? Um, I, I, I I've been asking people this because my feelings have, my feelings have changed over the years. What do you think about Nas? Um, what do you think about Nas? Nas, oh, um, icon, mm -hmm. businessman, mm -hmm. uh, a restaurant owner. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about you know, me? What about what about musically? Did did he ever duplicate, surpass? Or step out of the shadows if it was written in Illmatic? Well, I would say, uh, you know, you know, he, um, he was recently, he was recently given a Grammy. He got a Grammy recently. He didn't have control over Illmatic, right? Because he was so young when he made it, he didn't have the control he did as he has now because he was younger. And like I said, labels ain't gonna let you have that much creative control when you that young. Okay. At the time. Okay. You know, they put them with all these major producers, Pete Rock. You know, um, you know, to, to, to cover the integrity of the label more so than his idea. He probably, you know, he probably had a whole other idea of what he wanted for himself. You know, we never would know that. You know, because you know, like I said, some of these labels design a success rather than the artist designing it for themselves. I, I feel that Illmatic was more industry designed than as a, as a, as a, as an industry album for who he was more than the artist's perspective. Right. Being that he could have took it in his own hands, made his own beats. He didn't have to take the dude to do that. You know what I mean? So he just followed, you know, I guess he followed suit. Do you get excited? Um, there was a time when I was a shorty when Nas projects came out. I would get excited, man, because I knew it was going to be something funky on there and shit. Like, when them shits be coming out now, King's Disease and all this different shit, I'd I, I be missing the impact, man. Um, he got this song called Ugly This Dope. He got a couple joints, but I'm just saying, is, is, is Esco gone forever? I don't know. Um... I don't know if he's gone. I mean, from what I understand, the brother, you know, is still out here making music, trying to find his, you know, find his niche. I feel, I feel like uh, this magic project was decent. You know, I wasn't mad at it. It's not going to be an Illmatic. He's growing as an artist. And that's the thing about Is that me. the best that he can do? Like he, is we, we, we tend to expect, it, you know, the same things, but then there's change that we need to respect because it's more so the persona of the, you know, of who he is that shows, not the beats, not the songs, it's the persona of who he is, I think. That has a lot to do with it. That has a lot to do with it. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, you know... It, you it, it, described it as decent, you though. Wanna, you want that OMC Nas, but he's selling his persona. You know what I mean? And, I, you know, we, we, we got to accept change on that, and that's a part of who he is now, you know? Right. He's not, you know, he's not he's not the same person, I, I, I don't believe, as he was, as Bill Maddox. Okay. Well, the, the 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 feeling that I be looking for that 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 injection 
I still get it from Ghostface Killer. He hasn't aged. He hasn't lost a step. It just sounds fire and dynamic. Like, do you understand what I'm saying, man? Like, I hear ghost shit. I get to smile and shit. Like, <laughs> Esco used to do that for me, man. I don't know what happened. Yeah, you know what it is? Like, a lot of people grow out of things, like I said, you know, and um, shout to Ghost. I love Ghost. Um, I think he's a Taurus like me. Um, two days apart, birthday. Um, and, um, yeah, it's like, we, we, we get it. You know, we get it. We love the soul music. I love soulful music. Yeah. You know, if it ain't got soul in it, and it ain't got good in it, I could, like, really feel like I'm in church, and I'm, like, you know what I mean? I, I start feeling the way, like, I, the Holy Ghost. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, the I'm Holy like, Ghost. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a hell of a title. He need an album called The Holy Ghost. <laughs> that shit hard as fuck. I'm just saying, that's what my man Dustin Howell be saying. Like, yo, Dag, I need that Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye